I'm not sure if this is Moss Pond, Dream Pond. It's not Gentian, but it's a beautiful pond that I've here in the Mahusics. Quick video of home for the first night. Gentian Pond campsite. If you want a quick idea what the Mahusics are, it's just walking on this stuff and then up the mountain. This is climbing up Mount Success. Miserable. This is the top Mount Success with Mount Washington in the background. Um, a little bit of beyond the Great Overlook. Here's another video across Mount Success. Heading towards those big tall ones which are the which is Bull Goose or Goose Eye. That's Baltimore Bob ahead of me. I don't know if this comes out, but this was torture. And this is before the music notch. I'm still in New Hampshire. And there is the monumental moment. I hit Maine. Congratulations to me. Here's a look. We're going down. So we can go up Goose Eye. Goose Eye. The Mahusics are murder. I'm exhausted. Four miles to the shelter. Still going there. I've reached the infamous handles. I gotta climb up through there next. Can't wait. Almost at the top of Goose Eye. And as you can tell, I'm exhausted. And here's the famous steps to the top. Pretty spot here where the trail just stays on this ridge. I'm on the top of Goose Eye and I'm going to Little Goose Eye. This is the view on top of the second Goose Eye. Looking back over that next knob, it will be the Mahusik Notch and where I'm going to stay for the night. Here's a perspective of where I'm going. I'm going over to this next lip and staying the night. That's Foley Mountain to the left. I go down that into Mahusik Notch, climb up, and that is Old Speck, the highest mountain. Bald Pate is the one in the far distance. I don't know what's beyond that. This is night number two, Full Goose Shelter, heading to the Notch tomorrow. This is an early 5.30 start. Just climb Foley Mountain to the Notch. House. Did you? This is Baltimore Bob, by the way, for the video. Have, uh, we've been kind of together at nights for the last three nights. All right, we are at the notch. I'm with Baltimore Bob, uh, Baltimore Bob, if I may. Thank you again. And we're gonna do the notch together. Amen. In the notch we go. <laughs> this, is, this is the ice and the music and we made it over this one. All right, if we're going to go through this, and this is where we probably have to take our pack off. Bob squeezing through down here. If you taking a break here in the notch, hopefully we're beyond halfway. Tough hiking. Climbing through this crevasse. Almost, almost at the top of the Mahusik arm, which was horrible to climb. There was the notch way down in there. It's been quite a hike. And this is old Speck. From the top of the Mahusik arm. That's the next destination, that fire tower. This is Speck Pond. Beautiful. This is old Speck. And I'm about 20 minutes from the top. So tired coming off the spec that I'm having dinner before I hit Grafton Notch. Tonight it's going to be spaghetti. Okay, here's an unknown falls as we're going our way down to Grafton Notch. I'm gonna stay at the Pine Alice tonight. Off the plans. Another cascade on this little run. Still going down to Grafton Notch. All right, this is today's highlight. 
I uh, stayed at Pine Alice last night. I didn't have enough energy to get, make it to Bald Pate. This is Bald Pate, and uh, that is the East Peak. That is the highlight of my day. It should be the end of the big climbs for most of the day. It is about nine o'clock in the morning, and it's June 20, I don't know. This is Bald Pate East. Or west just came down that I love these field of flowers Went away to the big bald It's like going up a moonscape On bald pate All right reached major milestone today bald pate 3812 It is July 20 or June 27th We're on the summit a Tough climb Thought this was a pretty shot coming off the summit of Bald Pate. Heading downward now. Kind of a neat spot on my descent. This is Dunn Falls, right before I made across the road. It's been about four miles of pretty good hiking for a change, but it's so hot and humid today, it's still July 27th. This pond is called Surplus. It's drizzling, so I'm trying to find a place to sit down and eat. Surplus pond. Okay, ask me about how my trip is going. This is day four, and this is tough. This is so tough. Maine is just downright dirty. It's all up and down relentless. It's just it's crushing me. Love to stay here at this campsite. I'm gonna try two more miles, because I'm behind by four right now. I'm still at the pond. And I guess there's something romantic about uh, camping outdoors and doing this kind of thing because I got this place to myself. So I'm going to have dinner, try to get some energy and be able to move on. It's been drizzling for about the last two hours, but nothing bad. Been seeing this for two days, three, four days. This is moose poop all along the trail, everywhere. This is pretty dark. It's late. But some days this is what you have to drink. Just disgusting puddle water. That's the water source. Here's a shelter called Hall Mountain that I stayed in last night. Very crowded. Okay. Let me get a video quick. We're down at the bottom of Sawyer Brook, ready to do the merciless Moody Mountain. Just for perspective, up Moody Mountain, we've got several of these to help get up. It's so tough. This is. This is tough as the arm, the music arm. This is July 28th. It is a Tuesday. Just goes to show you how tired I am. It is June 28th, not July. And more is this stuff. Moody Mountain. Maybe the hardest mile I've ever done. Here's a pretty nice, awesome view climbing Old Blue, which is just as tough as climbing Moody Mountain. This is an open up spot, an old blue. Here's the insult to injury. We're almost at the top and I still got these rungs to deal with. We're getting to the summit of old blue. And the biggest killer of all is I hit the summit and there's no view. All that work and no view. It has been Maine's warmest and driest summers in a long time. That's paradise right there. I know nothing about this bench. I don't even know what mountain I'm on. I'm about three and a half miles from my shelter. Hmm. If the lakes show up on this one, this is a beautiful view. It'd be gorgeous anytime, but it's about seven o'clock, about a mile and a half to my shelter. Just to give you an idea of the muddy mess that I have to walk through. Almost to camp, June 28th. This is called scoping out a good tent spot. It's a uh, five after eight. I'm at Bemis Mountain Lean To. There's a few people here, but nobody near me. Good night. Good morning. I know you can't see much, but these are the kind of days as a hiker, you kind of know they're gonna come, but you dread. Because it's raining this morning. It's 10 after 5. And I gotta go out in this. Yikes. 
Good morning. Rainy day. It's June 29th. I always figured I would have one of these days. Just never want it to be here. We're about ready to go out in the rain. 13 miles in the rain. 30 main in the rain. Here's a look back at old blue. It's starting to clear up. Just gorgeous morning. These are beautiful little plants. This moss is just everywhere. To the average person, this looks like normal trail. It rained last night. This is a sliding board. I've been doing this for the last half an hour. It's miserable and it just keeps going. This is my first Ford on Bema Stream. And uh, there's no water in me, so I'm going to rock to rock. My first main ford across Bemis, and I just walked on rocks. Here I am, hanging out the highway, about 10 more miles to camp. Awesome. I can't remember if I didn't videotape this. I came up from there, on top of Bemis, down into the valley, up to the road, and that's my beautiful view. Getting a long stretch of just this through bogs on these little bridges. This is known as Moxie Pond. Moxie. Just a quick video of bug and birch trees in the bark. And a bug. This is a look at Sabbath Day Pond. I'm going down to the lean-to to dry out some stuff. All right, we reached the pond, not the shelter. This is Sabbath Day Pond with a thunderstorm to the south. Or whatever direction that is. Going to the shelter to relax. Well, sometimes this happens when you're on the trail and here we are. It's pouring down raining and I'm in a shelter, a Sabbath day shelter for kind of a lunchtime. It's about 1, 1, 1 30, and it's pouring, and I'm safe. Stay in the shelter two hours to wait out the storm. Now, question is who did this? On the way to Little Africa. Anybody have any suggestions where to go? This is what it does after it rains. Whew, boy. Swift, Little Swift River Pond is where I'm heading. I've gotten down to the uh, Little Swift River camp. A bunch of Girl Scouts are down there. This is a privy. This is where I go poop. There's nothing to it. It's just an outdoor privy. But it does have a place on it, making it pretty cool. See at camp. This is Swift. Little Swift River Pond. There's a bunch of Girl Scouts here. It's noisy. It's kind of pretty here. And I'm not going to be able to take the canoe out. For those of you interested in how I cook, I get that little canister. I stick the little stove on top of it, just plug it in. Get a lighter and turn up the propane or whatever it is and get it started. And I boil my water. And when I'm done boiling my water, I just pour the water into a mountain house. And I have two and a half servings. Pretty simple, just takes patience. Well, if you can hear it all, you can tell it's the third time that it's rained today. I was eating my meal outside and then just started and I had to get the tent up. Everything I own is soaked. I mean, there isn't a dry thing here. And it's seven, about quarter after seven. The day is done, but tomorrow I go into town and get dry. Tonight, very wet. I guess that's the breaks. Here is the pond after another rain. I just got fed by a bunch of camp girls. They gave me some beans, hot stuff. 
and I just got a meal. So sometimes trail magic happens. It is now June 30th, seventh day of the trip. I'm coming down in a range. This lake is about two miles before I come to the highway and where I stay at the hiker hut. This is what it's about. Yes, I'm tired. I'm ready for town and to eat. I don't know the name of this pond. I, it's just a little glitch on the, on the map, but it's gorgeous and it's Maine. Makes me want to swim, not. I believe this is the view of tomorrow's hike, Saddleback. Almost in range, one mile. I like this introduction to the hostel, hiker hut. Please ring the bell. This is the life of happiness. I'm in Rangeley. I'm having lunch at, I don't know what this place, the onion or something. Yeah. I'm at the public park in town. And this is Rangeley Lake. There's more of Rangeley Lake on the other side, just another block over it's on the other side. Just a beautiful place. Could retire here. This is an example of a hostel. This is a hiker hut outside of Rangeley where I'm staying the night in that bunk on the right. And I have a campfire. I have another good couple's bunk. That's all my trash on the porch. I'll show you inside. And this is my bunk for the night. This is what an inside of a hostel looks like. It's a loft, several other bunks, table, and again I picked that bed right there. It looks a little feminine, but I'll get over it. And Dea is going around and looking, and then I just gave up. <laughs> Here's another. He'll come up on your leg if you <laughs> want him to. It feels yeah. kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, there's... And this ends... Probably my favorite day so far on the trail. They're all going to bed, you can't even see up there. But this is a campfire, it is about 9.30, about ready to go off the bed. Good night, June 29th, or excuse me, it's June 30th. Happy July 1st, heading on the hard route up, 4,000 foot, I don't know if you can see very well under the sun, 4,000 foot saddleback. It's the big trip for today. You're gonna to see some spectacular scenery soon. Here's the second pond on the way up to Saddleback. Still have up three hours of climbing to get to the summit. I've been climbing for two. I've gone over 4,000 feet today. This is now the third pond that I've come to on my hike up Saddleback. These ponds are only about 20 minutes apart. Unfortunately, Saddleback is right up behind. You can't see it. Still climbing, but that's the lake that I was last filming. Saddleback. Yeah. They're not on top yet, but I like that AT sign up there telling me where to go. We're above tree line almost. Same insignia, just different angle. This is known as false summits. This is not the top of the mountain. You just keep going up on these things. When you get top, you find there's another one to climb. I've got probably a bunch of climbs to do yet. Saddleback. Could I be getting near the summit? Well, if you look up on that next thing, it looks like it might be a flag. We'll see. Saddleback. The summit of Saddleback. Another view from the summit with the uh, beautiful water behind the summit of Saddleback. 4,116 feet. My educated guess is that knob in front of us is called the Horn, and then the little knob to the right will be Saddleback Junior. We'll find out. So I'm out of half to the top of the next hill. 
and three miles, I guess, to that other one. Ciao. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's a look back at the saddleback from down below. And I am now going to go uphill. Just can't stop looking back. Saddleback. Made it to the top of the horn. 4,041 feet. Guessing next target now will be Saddleback Junior. That's a bit away. Just so you get an idea how steep the drop is. I don't know if that helps you or not. Gee, what did you do for your summer vacation? Oh, I climbed a few hills. That's all I did. July 1st, happy day. Finishing on Saddleback Junior. A lot of work to do. They're calling for a thunderstorm at 6. I'm here at 4. I'm not going to go on. I'm going to stay in the shelter tonight and not afford getting soaked. So this is Poplar Ridge Lean to in Maine, July 1st. Good morning. It's July 2nd, 6, almost 6.30. I'm at the summit of Poplar Ridge, getting out of my shelter about 15 minutes ago. It's July 2nd, ninth day of the journey. All right, I've arrived at my first Ford, real Ford, Oberton Stream, and uh, I'm gonna take the boots off and go across. Wish me luck, it's July 2nd. Just showing you that I've got my Creek shoes and I'm ready to go to the other side. And this is from the other side. It actually was an easy Ford. But it's like, hey, not deep, not swift. Cool. This is above the stream. They won't show you the real nice big falls, but I got something. Now it's climb, climb, climb. Most of the rest of the day. I just think this is pretty because I'm following the stream up the hill. So, just showing you. I just like this rock. It's really covered in green. We're coming down Spalding Mountain. I'm turning the camera on. Of course, the wind's going to die down. Not tape anything in particular. It said it's got incredibly windy, incredible gusts, and it's gotten really cold. I have my my blue stuff on, and it's just totally changed up here. It's going to be an outlow of 40 tonight. If it comes up on the camera, that's pretty cool looking fungus on this tree. Welcome to Maine. This is just a view ledge. And it's just kind of eerie the way the clouds are hanging. It's sunny in the valley and dark up here in the sky. And I get to go down into this stuff. Maybe it'll be sunny where I go. Who knows? Heading towards Crocker Cirque. There's some pretty wild terrain up here. Should have gone a little other spot to tape. I'm going to take that that's tomorrow's hike, the Crockers, and perhaps the Bigelows. After what seemed like took a gazillion hours, there's my Ford. I don't know the name of the river, but I'm stopping here to eat dinner. And this is the perfect supper spot tonight. We'll sit down on this rock. Good morning, Maine. 
It is July 3rd, and I'm climbing the Crockers Sunday, mo Sunday morning. And this is a nasty climb. View from the top of South Crocker. 7.30 a.m. All that worked for 41.68 and no view. Top of North Crocker. Now heading down to Stratton, although I'm not going in town, I'm going up the Bigelow's yet. And this is the descending part of Crocker. This is just pretty. And we're going down. I'm just right off the summit. Not exactly positive that this is the 2000 point, but it's good enough for me. Almost down to the road for Stratton, probably a mile. And I've hit mile 2000. Congrats to me, Pat, Pat. Oh no, there's just something cool about this spot. This just looks like me. Because it is. Going up. This just looks like Maine because it is. We're going up Bigelow. You want to talk about a spot that looks like Maine? I think this is a spot that looks like Maine. No moose. Kind of a strange atmosphere on top. I'm up almost on top of Bigelow. Getting there anyway. Love the moss. What a Bigelow. There seems to be a lot of damage stuff. It's kind of like a graveyard of trees and rocks. Kind of bizarre place. I don't know, going up Bigelow is like going up Carnage Mountain, <clears throat> but it's cool. Just some more cool main scenery on Bigelow. And there's the main peaks of the Bigelows. This is Horn Pond, this is where I'm staying the night, and this has ha absolutely has to be the prettiest sight I've seen in all of Maine. Horn Pond with the Bigelow Peaks above, and I'm staying down there. See you down there. Let's go back and film this now that's in the sun. Horn Pond and the Bigelows. Probably the most spectacular view I've seen in all of Maine. We're down here at the edge of uh, Horn Pond. It's about time for dinner. This is my dinner setting for tonight. Congratulations me. Just a quick video of my dinner spot. Can't ask for anything nicer for a spot. Except maybe my own dinner table. Here's home this evening at Horn Pond with the tent. Call it an evening, July 3rd. If you want a quick look-see in a tent, I always have my sleeping bag and a pillow. I always put my bag right up there and put little knickknacks on the side. That's my home every night. <laughs>